Hi guys, you are welcome to my YouTube channel, Make Them Tech. Happy New Year to you all. This is my first video tutorial this year. There are many video tutorials that we're going to roll out this year that would enlighten you, that will make you a better developer. Uh, just watch out. Today's video tutorial is centered on how you can structure your React project to fit industry standards. And we're going to be making use of the React Redux architecture. So in this case, we are going to uh, structure our code around React and Redux. So meaning that using Redux as our state uh, management um, library. This is my package.json file. Um, so I've already uh, set up this uh, application. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And then we now try to structure it to fit in into what is obtainable in the industry. I'm using uh, our normal webpack and Babel setup. This is my webpack. I don't want to waste too much time on this. I have uh, some couple of videos that has already addressed uh, these things like Webpack, Babel, React, Redux, and the like. So you can check my previous videos on that. Now, going straight to the point, we uh, there are some things I want you to put at the back of your mind that when you talk about you structuring your code base to fit industry standard, that means you are putting in mind some things like you want your code to be extensible, you want it to be maintainable, you want it to be readable. Uh, you know, for you to achieve this, one, you need to modularize your code. It's not like you just having just one file and then you jump everything, no. Um, so your code should be well modularized and then you should try to maintain the principle of one function or one tax per file. So it's not like you just having like two, three components in one file. And then all the normal semantics and best practices where you need to use pasta, pasta case, um, uh, where you need to use camera case and the light. I think I want to come up with a video to address this so that it can complement this video. So this video, you are going to see a lot of things being played out here. Some of these things I'm mentioning, but they are more than this, best practices and some things else. So I would, uh, I just want to, I don't want this video to be so long. So let me just dive in directly. Now I have this application you are familiar with app um, React. So this is a normal React application that has your, this is your app.js, this is your route. And then this is the dashboard and just like this. Now let's just look at, look at how it looks like. This is what we have here. So now I want to structure this code now. So there are some things I have to put into consideration. One, um so in my source my source uh would like to have uh, a folder where i can put my images i think that's good so images so um for this um you can decide to make your image folder to be general to the application or to, you can localize it maybe per module or per component or whatever but i think i kind of i like the idea of make uh, centralizing my images because uh, there are some images that I might want to use in another component. Then if you want to also still have another image localized, you can also do that. But I think if you maintain a central images, uh, image folder, you will still be able to scale the application or maintain it over time. And also I want to have a place where I will be keeping my styles. For this tutorial, we're using SaaS. So I uh, want to have a folder like that. You can also in your folder, this one is just going to have all uh, styles that are general or that, are, uh, that concerns the application as a whole. But I will still want to have some styles that are localized to my application. Yes, that is to components that I'll be uh, inserting into this application. So for example, maybe I have a feature or a module that talks to that has to do with maybe uh, recharging payment 
or something that has to do with maybe blog or maybe article, I can still have my own style for those ones. Then this one is going to be general to the application. Then your application should have a unit test folder. So I'm going to create a test folder now. So that's where I'm going to, that's where your unit test should go in. You can, this one can be general. You can also localize your test to uh, components. You can also do that. But if you want to centralize content, but I think sometimes if you want your test to, to, to be so pronounced in your application, localizing it, I think, I mean, per component is best. But if you are just someone that, okay, you think, okay, you still be able to maintain with this general or centralized idea, then you can go along with this approach. Now, uh, there are some things I also want to do which I believe is better because when you know that your code has this tendency of exploding, I mean, becoming huge in the future, it's good you do a whole lot of centralizing things and making things obvious, just not junking things together. Uh, I mean, for example, I know I'll be calling some endpoints in my application. Why don't I just create a folder called endpoints? And that's where all my endpoints will be. So if some endpoints are going to change, I don't have to worry. I don't need to be going from one folder to the other. I can just easily go to endpoints.js and I will make my changes. Also, I can also create something called constant. Uh, the idea of constant became so loud with the into um, the, with, with the advent of uh, React, uh, with the advent of Redux, rather, uh, where you have to declare some constants. And I think it's a very good idea if there are some peculiar strings in your application that are reusable that you're going to be using here and there in your application. To minimize mistakes, you can have some of them uh, written as a constant so that you can always just import and then use across your application. Uh, this is very okay because many people can work on, you, you can have a code base where a lot of people are going to be working on your application. Somebody might not even understand what this is and just do it. Maybe it's just S that is missing from that string. But when you have this constant, it would have taken care of all those things. So there are some things that you can declare as constant and reuse and use anywhere in your code base. Another interesting thing that um, we need to get into now is I like I said the other time. Okay, so let me just give you guys this uh, simple idea. You know, on the back end in my last uh, uh, video, in one of my videos rather, where I talked about Node.js project, you know, I mentioned that um, you, know, you can structure your code, you know, that structure is actually technical, whereby you have controllers, you have your services, you have um, uh, routes and the likes. So also in your front-end application, you can also bring that into your application, but it might become messy at the end of the day because you have to, anytime you want to bring in a new feature, you have to enter different folders before you can do that. So your front-end, because we are not talking about micro front-end here, so that's why it's best you work with a module or a feature. So the folder structure will be feature driven rather than me making it a technical based folder structure. What do I mean? Let me create something called, um, that's, um, let me create a folder called, I'll just call it modules. You can call it features, you can call it whatever you like. So it depends on what communicates best what you want to achieve. So I believe a simple um, terminology like modules can at least is explanatory. Now you have uh, your modules here. So you cannot begin to have, so anybody that wants to, maybe there's an application that has already gone live and then somebody is saying, you want to add um, something like want a place whereby uh, users can maybe submit um, their feedbacks and their suggestions and the likes, and you just want to tag that feature called uh, maybe feedback. So you don't need to worry too much. You just come, in, you just come to your modules, create a folder called feedback, and then put all your code inside it, and that's all. There is another, there's another feature that is coming on board again. You can also replicate same. So here yeah, now, let me just, then there's some things you just have to bear in mind. I need some things that are very, very important that are basic to application. Number one, you should have 
a, 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 a kind of a util folder. That's where all your, uh, your, uh, your utility functions goes into. Then also, you should have um, a layout folder too, where you put your sidebars, um, headers, footers, and the likes. So you can also have that. Then for your application, these days we are now using the word dashboard as against using home. We're talking about application now. So we just have your dashboard folder. So this is just going to be a sample. Then let me just put, uh, let's just say we are trying to develop a small blog. Uh, let's just say I'm putting something called blog. Mm. Then you can maybe task comment, you can put comments, you can put different things. So this is a simple structure that uh, is maintainable over time that you can easily work with. So you already have everything here set up. So what I will just do now is just pick one of them and then try to do some small thing with it. Um, okay, let's even just do a little thing about the dashboard, but I will not go down into the details for dashboard. So let me just, so for dashboard now, like I said earlier, we're going to be working. So now the first thing we did now was to create a folder based on, to structure our, our folder based on features. Now we are now going to go technical. Now technical means that we're going to, that is, you are going to arrange our folders based on their technical rules. For example, we have components. Then the next one would be, um, what should that be? Yes, let's say constants. Talking about Redux here now. So then the next one will be um, talking about actions. Then the next one, talking about reducers. Lastly, we are going to create a folder called from services. So this is what we have. Now, we now want to, okay, so now let's just try and do some things here, some simple things like let us create a dashboard. So for me, I think if you are creating a component and you are using the extension .dsx, one, anybody can easily differentiate your component from just any other JavaScript file. Actually, all of them are JavaScript, yeah. But you know, when you give this, this uh, distinction to your components, anybody can easily cite it and just know, oh, yes, I'm expecting to see a React component here. So, but some people feel like, okay, let me just use my name and .cs. But you know, even with your VS Code, having this symbol, at least you can easily say, okay, yes, this is a component. So it's a, it's a good idea, but it's not compulsory based on, it depends on what works for you dashboard.css. So for this one now, I know here that this style, this styling or what is going to be contained in this dashboard.css is speaking to this dashboard. So you can see it's also in the capital letter, the first letter is capital letter. So just like what we have here. Then let me enter into my dashboard and then let me just do some little things there. Okay. So I don't want to be typing things that I'm there. Let me just type something like, let me just put my I, let me just put my I, everyone. Or let me just say, new year. So we have this now. Okay. So we still get to this. So I have this already created. So I just want to. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm, so I'm supposed to put it here. Yeah. So uh, let me save it. Save all. OK, so now let me still, let me confirm that we are still within track. Let me go to my route so I can change this to the new dashboard that I've created now. So uh, now I'm going to modus. I'm not using that dashboard again. So for my modus, I enter into my dashboard. Then lastly, I'm going inside components. 
and then dashboard. Okay, so I'm going to, so I should have the same results now. Let me open my browser. Let's see what has changed. Happy New Year. So still working. Now let's try to, uh, okay, so let's leave that. Let's go to, let's try to work on this blog. Okay, before we move to blog, uh, so because I know I'm going to be making some calls, uh, so you need to create a, so you need to centralize your, calls what i mean is that for example now if you want to make a call you can either use fetch you use axios or whatever so we are using axios i'm using axios in this tutorial so for me to just be literally my code with axios here and there why don't i just have a folder whereby all my calls will go through that folder i have my header set up already the base already is there everything is there so if there's anything that goes wrong i know i can trace my application from my my folder that is centralized for calls and everything like that. So what we can do is just go to your utility function and then create a folder called file call request.js. You can call it anything you like. Some people might call it HTTP request. Some people might call anything whatsoever. Just know that it's, it's a very good thing you centralize some of these things. You don't need to worry too much about you just writing Axios all the time. Um, I have something ready and just paste it directly so you can see this. Yeah, so actually, in this story, I'm going to be using this as my base URL for API call. We're just going to use what uh, we have there that we can always use to demonstrate. Uh, at least something that you guys will want to see in this tutorial. Now, let me try to um, work on this uh, blog. So for my blog, I have my actions, everything. So let me just go ahead and copy what I have created here already. So I have my actions components, producers, okay, and services. So I can just click on copy. Then I go to my blog. So blog, I can paste directly. So, um, so this one now I have to change it to blog. And then my CSS, uh, my SAS also will have to change. So blog, okay. Then, so when I was talking about um, style images and uh, so when I was talking about images and uh, unit tests, you can put your test folder also inside this component for this guy. If you want to localize it and for images too, if you want so if you want to do that too. But this in this tutorial, I'm just trying to work with a centralized folder structure for that. Okay, now let me just try and, and just um what should I do inside that blog? Okay, so now let me just so let's just try and then put something there. Um okay, so because I'm going to be making a call. Um, okay, so uh, okay, let me just let's do it this way so that uh, it will be very fast. So let me just start straight now. Let me go to my actions. So for actions, I'm just going to create this. Uh, that's a new file that is blog actions. Yes, then let me go to my constants. Yeah, so sometimes it's very good. You also attach the name of that folder together with the name of the file. So blog. Constant, constant. Dot js. Then, <clears throat> then we have for reducer, reducers. That is blog reducers. The js. So you can see here now. I'm using the js. Not it's not a component, so I'm not using the jsx. Yeah. Then we have blog services. Dot js. So that's good. So. Uh, because of our time, let me just paste what I have for you guys uh, so that everything will be very fast. I don't want this video to be too long. So let me, so for my, so this is what I have for my actions. So, okay, let me just keep pasting all of them so that I will come back to give some brief explanation. But you can get to understand Redux from my past videos. Just check to see some video tutorials on it. So we just tutorials on Redux. And then for reducers, let me go there now. So we have reducers, and then we have these. So what's for reducers? Let me see what about reducers. 
Oh, this is another one. This dashboard. Okay. So reducers. Okay. So I have reducers for services. So these services, some people might not get to understand, or some people might not be familiar with this idea of services. So this works with your request.js and your endpoints. Uh, let me copy something under that so you, so you get to see what it looks like. So I think I will even start my explanation from there, that point. Okay, so here now, um, so now instead of me to do import axio zero, blah, 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 blah. So what I'm just doing here is just me calling this, bring, importing this function, the request function that I've created already. And then my all my APIs to, you know, bringing them all of them here. So I can just destructure it here and then I can put it here. So I'm passing this option as an argument into request. So if you go to my UT function, you will see the request that it has set. Um, so, you know, so what happened is that this code piece is actually, you can get it from the documentation of Axios. So from here now, I can just easily just import it and then pass the options to it. So when I pass the options to it, so it will just run through. So this instance, this access to create is to create a um, some things for you. So this one is that I mean, when the time when the call is is staying too long, more than thirty seconds, it's going to time out. So this is the base URL for I've created this. So here now I've created it as an instance. So then there are some then there are some properties interceptors that request that I can use to make the request. Yeah, and then the error can also be tracked there. So this is just like your normal, um, um, what's it called? Um, like a promise is rejecting it and then your promise is being fulfilled. So it's on Axios documentation, you can always study that and use it. So I just pass my option that uh, services, I just pass it into this request and it will make the call. So then the next thing that I will also talk about my blog reducers, you understand you have to initiate your states, initial states and all this blah, 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 blah. Then constants as you have it. Then actions. This is my action dispatcher. I'm actually using Redux Tonk. And then you. So this block service. This is where it comes from. So I just import my block service here. So and then I'm doing await block service dot get blocks. So you no, know, my block blocks is a function here. Get blocks is a function here. So I'm passing. Um, okay, I'm not passing any argument to it because it doesn't receive any argument. So this is it is. So then when the result comes back, I now save it inside this guy, this action creator, and then I have it on, and then I can get it as a prop inside my blog component. So I have not finished setting up, so I have to go back now. We are missing some things here. We have we need our reducer and our store here. Yeah. So let me let me close this. Okay, so after closing this now, now, now I need to set up my store so that we can we can set up the store. So I will just copy what I have. So let me just create it store. Is it just in this place? I have to create it inside source. <laughs> yeah. So store dot store dot gs and then i need to create reduce that too so the reducer the reducer that will work with the store reducers dot gs okay so i what i'll just do is let me copy what i have for store so like i said earlier i'm using redox tonk for that for my for the action dispatcher so to be able to make a synchronous call then for reducer Oh, this is actually a user. Let me let me cut it. Let me go to store. Then for reducers, so let me just copy what I have already. So you see that I, uh, I you can see that I'm importing these blog reducers from where, where it is. That's blog reducers the blog. So then I'm bringing it here. So this is combined. So I'm using some functions that some methods that are available inside Redux, like combined reducers. So instead of me to be doing it one after the other, so I can just combine. If I have like 30, 40, or no matter the number, I can just put all of them here. No problem. Then the same thing is happening here too for my okay. Let me get there for block. So I will be doing that too. So is there anything we are missing? <laughs> for my store, 
is what it looks like using so the root reducer so just import from root reducers and then put it there and apply middleware this is how you can add a middleware this function helps you to add middleware to your store yes so we are looking good gradually going back to our modules uh blog so let's go back to our components so let's go back to our components so we have um so please sorry for the noise there are some background noise so just please uh, sorry for that uh then for okay so far this for our dashboard so let me just import our blog into this place um let me just copy what i have directly so that i don't don't want to waste too much time so let me just copy this okay so we have this now Okay, so this is what we have now. So from blog, so this for, no, this for dashboard. So let me go to dashboard and do that. Dashboard. Okay, so this for dashboard. And then for blog now. So let me just copy that of blog now for you guys to see. So I'll now explain all that we have there. So let me go to blog. So for blog, we are, we have, uh, you know, my use effect connect. So we are using this guy for our map state to props and our map dispatch to props. Uh, then we have bind action creators. This one helps you to, instead of me trying to be writing everything directly, I can just use it to destructure into this guy and I have my call for my actions. I mean, from the, I have from blog actions. Then this is my normal block CSS. Um, so now this is my normal map to props. Have it. So now when you are loading these components, um, component did mounts. So I mean using this use effect. So I get my blog and then so this is my blog. So once it's not available, this is not going to happen. I mean, this particular section of the UI is not going to be shown. But if it's there, then it will I'm going to map it and it's going to be displayed on the screen or inside that page that blocks page so and we have already uh, so we are, we are so this blog is not going to be like a child of this dashboard and that's what we have here so i think we should be able to run it so in short from what we have here and then another thing i would i also skip this you should also have a folder called custom custom ui so custom ui is that any ui that you want so your company maybe you have a maybe a particular button a particular style of button that you want you can just call it my button let's say maybe my button my button your gsx you can put it there so maybe your customers you might be using a particular library maybe you're using material ui semantic ui or uh, whatever and design whatever you are using you can use it normally but when it comes to the custom ui you can have your own specialized ui with your css you can also put your css here too your sas here and then that's all so any other youtube functions can also come here and then you are good to go so then your layout what you what should you have inside your layout then you put your oh no let me put a folder let me put a folder over it so we have a header and then you have um, your footer and what do you have again in the sidebar and the likes so you replicate same inside your footer you have your component action reducer and the others so we are gradually moving towards the end of this tutorial but i want to cross check all over again to see that everything works so inside my public food i just have this my index HTML. Yeah, it does. yeah so it's not a big deal so my actions i want to believe everything is correct so when let's check there might be errors that will not battle with errors so let's see what will happen let me first of all check my this thing is it compiling successfully is everything right successfully yeah so let's check our let's check if something is wrong somewhere and i mean something is wrong somewhere so let's check for that OK, 
okay. Okay, so let's try to tackle that now. Okay, so let me try to do this. Okay. So for dashboard, this produce. Okay, so store the GS. So I have my store here. Okay, I know where the problem is. I need to enter into my this guy. No, is it this guy? No. This guy. Okay, yeah. So I have to enter into that guy. Yeah. So that's where the problem is coming from. I have to enter into index.js. Yeah. So that's where the problem is. So let me just copy what I have here. And then we're good to go. So, okay, so we have um, so we have our store here. We have provider, just the normal way of setting up your store. So we have okay, so let's see if it's now. Let's see what's going to happen. Still not working. Things happen, something has broken again. Let's see what is the problem this time around. It's not a function. Okay, so let's look through that other problem. Okay, so let me go back to modules. So let's go to blog. Then from blog, let's go to. So where's the problem coming from? Blogs. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this place is good. Let's go to our reducers. Okay, yo, 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 yo. So the problem is endpoints. So we don't have anything inside our endpoints and we're trying to make a call. Okay, so let me copy what I have here for endpoints. So you have this, yo. I think this is, so do you have any other issue? Let's try it again. If there's other if there are other issues, we are going to solve that also. Wow. So we have this. So this is uh, our API call. You can check your network. You can see to do. You can see that it went and it came back with a result. So that is. Um, uh, we had to docs architecture. Uh, we have just um gone through that now so this so just for me so that it will just be like i don't uh, i don't i don't want to skip this let me just do something inside this place just for you guys to know that you can actually structure your code like that let me say color let us say blue so it is my sas there okay yes so let's check it okay you can see so um so that is uh, how to structure your React projects to fit industry standards. I can easily add anything to this code without uh, suffering myself to understand the code base or to do one or two things with it. So this is a very good way of structuring your code. And so this constant, we didn't even touch on constants. We every, there are a lot of things to talk about. So you know about your constants, you can just write something, just export it and then just bring it in. So it's similar to the way you are doing it in your Redux and then you have it around. So uh, what else do I want to talk about? That's just, so this about the is there for production. If you are going to production, then you can just do your normal NPM input. And then this is going to serve your React application. So this, 
is the end of the tutorial guys if you are yet to subscribe to my youtube channel please do that now this is the new year please subscribe we have a lot of videos for you guys subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that when we drop a new video you can be notified thank you i will see you in the next one